Sonic. Lab. TDD. So that was the first look at the Behringer X32. This is the brand new desk from Behringer. Um, I was bringing some drum stems in there from the, uh, the computer via the built-in Firewire and USB audio card. That's 32 in, 32 out. I'm not gonna attempt a full review here. I've decided to try and break it down into a couple of stages. So what we're gonna look at here is the hardware and the sort of ins and outs and just kind of the surface itself. And then we'll move on uh, in other parts to look at other aspects. So first of all, let's look at the uh, front panel. So looking at the surface here, it's uh, quite a large thing. I'd say it's probably a couple of uh, 19 inch racks wide. Um, lots and lots of control on here. We start with the main faders. These are 16 channels, moving fader. You've got th uh, multiple layers. So 116, 1732, auxiliary returns, and then bus master you can switch to. There's metering on each of them, which shows you the compression, the input gain, and uh, whether the gate's active. And you've also got these little L LCDs which you can change up to be different colors and you can type the names in there and put little icons there So it's really easy to see at a glance and this is a sort of nod to the live world because this has kind of been made in conjunction with Midas who uh, are a big manufacturer of uh, you know proper front of house desks for big touring rigs then we come up here we've got this sort of channel strip we've got the Preamp and the preamp again is designed by Midas. It's uh, not a Behringer design, but Behringer does own Midas. So you've got the preamp, we've got 48 volts, low cut, which we can sweep right up. Uh, and then we've got a gate, dynamics, sorry, a gate and a compressor. And all of these buttons have got little view buttons. So if I switch to this, I press the view button, then you come over here, then basically the uh, display up here, which is a nice large display, will reflect it. So if I hit that again, so if I now go to the threshold, I press view. I got the gate settings, or if in the compression, I've got the compression settings just by hitting the view buttons. Then we've got a four band equalizer, multi-mode, notch, high pass, and this is all very visual and easy to look at. It reminds me of the faders a little bit on uh, the, BC, the, the BC series that they made, but I think these are higher quality. And speaking of quality, you know, these aren't bad at all. And if you've seen any of the videos, uh, these are Behringer's own make. Um, they've got these kind of like IKEA testing machines that just kind of do this for hours and hours on end. So they've been tested sort of hundreds of thousands of travels. Uh, obviously that remains to be seen as to the, you know, the longevity of those, but it's got a three year warranty, this thing as well, to remember. Then we have bus sends. Uh, 16 buses, they can be configured as groups or as auxiliary sends. We'll go into that a bit later. Then the main bus level, uh, mono bus, uh, stereo bus routing. And you, you know, as with all digital desks, you hit the select button and this is the channel that reflects the settings. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so if we come over to this bit, this is the center section and these are, these are DCA groups. And what this allows you to do is assign a kind of a control to multiple faders. So if I, I can have lots of channels, including their pan setting, on one fader, whereas on a group, you would have it as a stereo pair generally. So it just really had to, you could have like drums, keyboards, vocals, you know, all of these things. You've got lots, when you consider each of them, each of these can represent a stereo output, if you like. And again, we've got the metering here, uh, the LCD, the metering, and DCA group mode. When you hit select, if you look here, it shows you what, what group, what channels are the member of the DCA, and I can add or replace them. Nice and simple. So coming over here, we've also got this section, which is a signable section, and we can use this for accessing things like effects, or we've got three different scenes, and we've got 12 buttons and uh, four rotary encoders. Very, very nice. Again, mute groups as well, so we can mute groups of channels. This again is really designed for live work. And then this little pad here, which allows you to put your phone in here. It's sort of iPhone friendly. Unfortunately, my HTC One X, which I haven't got on my at the moment, doesn't quite fit in there. Finally, we've got scenes recall again, and we just hit view. And if you look up here, it gives me all my possible scenes and I can just go up and down like this and then hit go and recall a scene straight away. So that's sort of the front panel starting with. Uh, we've got a few more things to show you. Uh, if we come here to the top of the monitoring section, 
Uh, we've got the ability to monitor output, so that for studio use, we've got a separate headphone output, mono and dim, so we can affect the level in the room, and we can view the way that that's all set up. Lots and lots of uh, possibilities here. Then we've got two talkback levels. You can even have a momentary talkback and a latching talkback, just another kind of cool feature. Room for a 12 volt lamp uh, if you're in a live situation or an external mic. So I'm sorry if I'm going very fast, but this has actually got such a lot to offer. And again, we're just really looking at the hardware here. Uh, we should have a special mention of the screen quickly while we're on the top surface. So here's the screen. It's large and very easy to see. We've got these buttons for sort of home, metering, routing setup, all sorts of desk setups, configuration, library, effects. There are eight stereo effects uh, engines in here, which you can use for actual sort of processing effects like delay, reverb, what have you, or have graphic EQs if you wanted to set this up for front of house or monitor sends. Very, very flexible there. And I should mention while I'm here, I should mention here, if I go to setup and I go to the card, We've got a Firewire and USB card built in. This comes supplied. There will be other cards along, apparently. You can figure it 32 in, 32 out, 16 in, 16 out, uh, 8 in, 32 out. Lots of different ways of setting it up. So if I go to routing, you can see we've got the physical analog input channels. We can route from the mix bus inputs. We can route from the card returns. There's a lot of potential here. We can route in blocks of eight or on a per channel basis. So I can send any channel to any input as I want. Also looking here, you've got the AES50, which is a digital networking protocol which gives us 48 channels in and out via the two networking ports. This is a digital audio networking protocol that Behringer have chosen with extremely low latency and it gives you up to 48 channels of input and output per port so you can have up to 96 channels coming in and out of the X32 that stage boxes or whatever over Cat 5e cable that runs up to 100 meters and there's their P16 monitoring system which you can run off here which is uh, like a, uh, a dedicated monitoring setup but we'll, we can maybe talk about that a bit later on. While we're here let's Let's look at all these ins and outputs. Look, we've got 32 XLR balanced inputs, and these have all got Midas preamps on them, so that's your 32 inputs. We've then got 16 balanced outputs, which you can configure to be outputting whatever you want, really. I mean, the subgroup outs, auxiliary outs, bus outs, whatever you like. I mean, it's very flexible. And down here, we've got six auxiliary ins two on phono and six auxiliary outs. We've also got MIDI IO, uh, remote control over ethernet and USB. And this is the card which it ships with, which is the Firewire and USB 2. And then we've got monitor outputs on XLR and the control output and not forgetting the ASEBU, which is what we're listening to well, earlier. That's ASEBU going into our mixing desk, which is going digitally into the sound mix. So all you're hearing is the sound of the desk. Phew, I mean, you know, I'm going very fast because there is a lot to this. And also I'm gonna break the review as I set up into a few pieces and I wanna cover the hardware today. Um, so coming in, we've got one more thing that you wanna look at here. And this is a little USB, uh, port, a data recorder. So if I press the view here, I've essentially got a little two track recorder and playback system that I can actually record the main mix out or however I want. If you look here, the inputs can be from, gosh, you know, mix bus, matrix, direct out monitor, we've got all these options. So we can record it pre, post fader, however we want. And then also we can play these back if we want. So we might have a two track return. If I come over here and I press auxiliary in, we've got auxiliary seven and eight are set to be USB left and right, which is coming back from the recorder. So lots and lots of features there. And I know that build quality is gonna be something that you're very concerned about because I mean, let's face it, Behringer haven't had the best track record, but I think with this desk, because they've just acquired Midas, which is a very high end uh, touring kind of grade live console system, and also Clark Technic, who've made traditionally very high quality studio effects. Lots of the algorithms are in here in terms of the effects. They're really trying to sort of up the perceived quality of their stuff. And so far, I must admit, with this, I'm kind of thinking that they've done a pretty good job. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna stop it there, and I'm gonna ask for comments and questions below. If there's anything else you wanna find out about it, uh, please ask in the comments, and we will get onto it in the next part of the review. But that was the Behringer X32 kind of overview of the hardware, sort of rather breakneck speed, admittedly. So thanks for watching, see you next time.